What is going on guys? Welcome to the channel and today we are going to talk about sessions and how they work in Django framework. And it should take me a couple of minutes to explain and if you don't have time to watch this video then you're probably going to fail on the job interview the same as I did when I was applying for a junior position in a tech company. So here's the story. I remember that in the first interview that I had I was doing pretty decent, but then I got asked this question about sessions and I remember that everything that I was saying was completely wrong and it was a little bit embarrassing. Luckily I got the job at the end because I guess I had a good understanding of other topics, but maybe you are not going to be lucky as I was. So listen. But seriously, Sessions Framework is a big part of Django. It is used in many web applications and learning how it works is going to help you understand these applications better and you'll just have a deeper understanding of Django Framework in general. So if that sounds interesting to you, then let's dive in. Okay, before I show you an example of how you can use Sessions in Django Framework, I wanted to quickly explain why they exist and what problem they solve. So let's say you want to watch some YouTube videos. So you open a browser, you go to a website, and what's happening at that moment is that your browser sends an HTTP request to the server. And this server is going to give you some HTML page, some JavaScript, and some CSS styles. Now, the problem is that HTTP was designed to be stateless, which means that each request that your browser makes is totally unaware of actions that previous requests did. But if it's stateless, how are we going to keep track of the state between a site and a particular browser? For example, let's say we want to save the user's preferred language on a website. Or let's say we want to change a theme on YouTube from white to dark. Obviously, you don't want to switch to dark mode every time you open a website, but if HTTP doesn't have state, where can we keep this information? How our website knows that for this particular browser we should show a website in the dark mode and uh, the website should be translated into Russian, let's say. There are a couple of different ways to solve this problem nowadays, but back then web applications they were not as advanced as they are now. And people were solving this problem with cookies and sessions. So let's talk about them. Now let me show you a simple example in Django. Here we have a view that increments the number of users' visits each time the user loads the page. So let's break it down. First of all, as you can see, request object has a session object. And session object behaves like a dictionary. <clears throat> we can set values by key and we can get values by key. And the first time when the browser opens the page, we try to get a value from session by visits key, but this key and value don't exist yet. So we get a default value at the beginning, which is zero, and we increment zero by one, we get one and we save one to the visits key. The next time when the browser opens the page, we try to get a value from a session by visits key and we get one. And we increment one by one, we get two and we save two to the session again. And the next time when the browser opens the page, we get two from the session, we increment two by one, we get three and we save three to the session. And here's how it looks in the browser. That's the first load the second load and the third load. Now, the question is, how does it work under the hood? First, Django stores sessions in the database. So let me show it to you. If we try to connect to SQLite and if we try to execute this query, this query selects all of the rows from Django session table. So if we try to execute it, you'll see that our table has one row. And this table has three columns, session key, session data, and expired date. 
and if we, and if we try to remove this row from the table right now so let's do that now we don't have this row and if we try to refresh the page you'll see that the counter started from the beginning now let's take a look at uh, our data in the table I don't see visits data here I just see some random strings how does it store data what's the meaning of session key and session data columns expired data is pretty obvious it's the date when the session is going to be expired but what about session key and session data so let's talk about session key first so session key is just a random string that Django sends to the browser in uh, response headers so if we try to refresh the page and if we look at uh, response headers we will see this um, set cookie header and this set cookie header has session ID and this session ID is basically the same as session key in our table so when Django sends set cookie header Django is basically trying to say to the browser that the browser needs to save this information in cookies so browser saves this information in cookies and every time the browser sends requests to the server it sends this information in cookie header so if we refresh the page we will see that in request headers we have this cookie and when the browser sends the request Django gets this session key from the cookie and it uses it to make sure that you are the same person who accessed the site earlier basically and it gets session data from the database using this session key that the browser sent in cookie header now let's talk about session data column in session data column Django stores the data itself and um, as you can see it stores the data in an encrypted way because this string doesn't make any sense so I've looked at Django source code and I was able to figure out how to decode this code so let me show it to you Django has this session store class and this class is responsible for basically it has all of the logic related to sessions and if we want to if we want to decode the code we need to call decode method and when we create an instance of the class we pass some session key and when we call decode method we pass session data And by calling decode method, I was able to get what I wanted. So that's basically everything you need to know about sessions. And if you are still watching this video, I appreciate it so much. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Dennis, and this channel is all about mastering web development and growing as a full stack Python web developer. If that appeals to you, consider subscribing and if you'd like to connect with me even further, you can follow me on Twitter or on my Instagram. Links will be in the description. So thanks for watching guys, see you in the next one.